Happy New Year! My hope is that everything will become clearer for you as we work to increase the number of visible learners in this year of 2020. Today is broken into three sections. First, you should have met with your building staff this morning to review your building focus and how to increase student learning. Next, you should be meeting with your PLC team to discuss your data, review your SLO and PPG, and collaborate on what data shows is the best way to help students learn. And finally, you've chosen at least one seminar to attend so that you can further your skills as an educator because Hattie states the greatest effect on student learning occurs when teachers become learners of their own teaching. Let's start the day with a review of our yearly educator effectiveness tasks. Your PLC point person has a new winter spring 2020 punch card for you. The next deadline you should be aware of is February 20th. This is when your mid-year PPG and SLO are due. Because you only do this three times a year, here's a short reminder on where to find your paperwork. Find Google Classroom under your waffle and then open up your educator effectiveness class. The new Google Classroom organizes things a little differently. You will open up directly to the stream. You will need to click on the tab Classwork in order to find your work. Scroll down until you find the 2019-2020 tasks. Then find your PPG and SLO and open it. A common mistake is to add or create. If you do this, you'll create a new document and you'll find that none of your beginning of the year information is present. Remember to click on the document with your name attached. This next bit of information is going to be a lot, so feel free to stop the video and ask your PLC point person for more information. In your mailboxes this week, you should have received a revised copy of a booklet that outlines the salary schedule, salary schedule guidelines, and the professional development unit requirements, along with which cell you are currently in. This system was created two years ago at your request. Beginning in July of this year, the salary schedule is complete and ready for you to move either to the right or down a level. For those of you who are on level C or level D this year, you will need to turn in your PDU tracking form that you have been filling out for the last two years in order to move down a level. Every three years, you need 24 PDUs, which is prorated to about eight a year. This year, the staff in a C or D cell did not have a full three years. Therefore, they only need 16 by May 1, 2020 to move down a level. There will be meetings scheduled in the near future to help answer any questions you might have. And now let's talk about our five-year goal. In order to increase our impact on student learning, research shows that we need to increase the number of active or visible learners in our classrooms. This short video reminds us that even young children can learn to be visible learners and what it sounds like if they are taking an active role in their learning. Please stop the video and watch this now. In Medford, there are four main areas of visible learning that we are focusing on. The first is in the area of communication, which encompasses teacher clarity and success criteria. In other words, what do we want students to know and do, and what does it look like if they do it? The second is in the area of questioning and discussion and metacognition and dialogue. Can students talk about what they are learning, how are they learning, and the strategies they are using to get there? The third area is engaging students in learning. Are students resilient and aspire to take on challenging work? And the fourth area is in assessment and feedback. Are students seeking feedback and seeing their errors as opportunities? Are they comfortable saying that they don't know or that they need help? As you work on improving your impact on student learning, keep in mind that although there needs to be structure, there is also a lot of flexibility. For example, although everyone needs to learn new ideas in order to increase their impact on student learning, the district gives the flexibility to learn these by yourself or in a team. You can have a facilitator or you can learn from online and offline resources. And even though everyone needs to focus on at least one aspect of visible learning, you have the flexibility to decide which aspect you want to work on first. Today's list of seminars showcase this flexibility. For example, if you want consistent support and collaboration in your visible learning journey, you could join the Blended Learning in Action group or the new group called Together We Are Better, Creating Visible Learning One Step at a Time. If you want to work without a facilitator, you could use the template and resources provided in the Creating Visible Learning seminar. If you want more ideas in certain areas of visible learning, then there are different seminars you could attend today. 
For example, if you want to work on questioning and discussion techniques, you could attend the Five Practices Awesome Student Discourse. If you want to work on giving feedback, you could attend the Ideas You Can Use Tomorrow, Ways to Save Time Grading, or Small Group and Conferring. And if you want to work on communication and clarity, you can attend the Great Cur Curriculum Adventure or Using Learning Progressions and Exemplars in Writing. I challenge you to find at least one idea that you've never heard of, or you may have heard of but never tried, and try it out next week. The new idea doesn't have to be earth-shattering, it can be something small, but try it. Don't tuck it away for later, because later may never come. Once you've tried it, share it with your colleagues. Tell them how it went, even if it failed.